Hi, welcome to Plain Talking with Amy. I wanted to uh, do something special today. I want to talk to high school students and the middle school students and I just want to do some real talking. I, w I want to just talk plain to you. I know that I'm old enough to be your mom and um, but I, I don't want to talk to you as a mom today. I just want to talk to you as somebody who has been picked on, bullied at times, somebody who has been suicidal, uh, somebody who understands what it is to feel like there's just no hope and that it's not going to get any better. And um, just trying to figure out how to get out. And so... Let me be a voice that talks to you plain and just talks real to you today. See, I know that when you're in high school, it seems like it's never going to end and you're just a nobody sitting there sometimes. You know, yeah, you've got your own little group of friends, but in the scheme of things, like you really even matter. That's how it feels. Let's just be real. That's how it feels. Because in high school, really, there are only a small handful of people who seem to be important, who seem to be um, on the top of the world. But I am telling you today that when you are out of high school, the people that are so important today, the things that matter so much today, they're just not going to matter so much. From the time you're 18 until you're 25, your life is going to change so much. Who you are is going to change so much that you're going to wonder why those things even mattered to you when you were 16 and 17. But let me talk to you about those of you who are suicidal because you think you don't matter and you think the world would be a better place without you. I want you to know today, hands down, that that is the biggest lie that you will ever tell yourself. It is a lie that you don't matter. Your mom and dad, I, I don't know how things are with them, but I'm telling you that if you were not there and you were not in their world, it would make a difference. To your friends, those people that look to talk to you every day when you come to school, it's going to make a difference. Your not being there would probably affect more people then you know. See, I know that when you're suicidal, um, you kind of say to yourself, they'll be better off without me. That they'll only miss me for a little bit and then they'll just keep on living their life and they'll be okay. That is not true. I graduated with a girl whose younger brother committed suicide. I believe he was 19 years old when he committed suicide. That was 30 years ago. And I want you to know that family still hurts over that. Families and friends do not just forget you and keep going. They wonder all their life what they could have done to help. What did they miss? What could they have said? Why, why didn't they see? They will beat themselves up over and over and over wondering how they failed you. So, so suicide is not it. Because not only do you hurt them, 
but you miss becoming who you were supposed to be. You miss out. Maybe you're not real popular in school. Maybe you've never really dated anybody or anything, but I'm telling you, when you get out of school, it's a whole new world. There are new opportunities waiting for you. Um, and those things that maybe set you apart, that make you different in school, are going to be the very things that make you succeed as an adult. I bet that uh, people, listen, okay, let, let me just, I'm just going to use myself for an example, okay? In school, um, I was not the smartest, I was not the dumbest. I was not an athlete, uh, I was in band, and my junior year I picked choir up again. I've always loved to sing, I sang from the time I was four. And I, I was one of those kids that, you know, when I was home, I had my records playing and I was singing in the mirror and dreaming of being able to sing on stage one day, you know? The likelihood of me becoming a big time singer, that was really like, yeah, right, you know? Nothing extra special about me or anything like that. But now, in this part of my life, I sing with my husband. We write and record our own music. My husband's song last month in our genre, we do Christian country music, was number two on the only chart that Nashville looks at for Christian country music. If I had committed suicide, I want to be on this spectacular journey. We travel across the country. We live in our motorhome. We sing. And I'm doing exactly what it was I dreamed of. Maybe not quite on a big a scale as what I thought about doing it. But I'm doing it. And the music that I'm singing. And being able to share with people about being so depressed. And how my life is different now. I'm helping other people. Just like I'm hoping to help somebody today. Life is going to be different. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't, don't give up. There is hope. I'm telling you there's hope for you. The, the guy who was the star quarterback. In my class. He was quiet. He was a nice kid. Um, he. Uh, I just remember him being very quiet. But he was very popular of course. I didn't get to go home. For my last class reunion. But I asked. The guy who put it on. If he would share with some of the pictures that he had with me. And one of the pictures that he sent, it was the memorial table. And it had pictures of the students who had died since we've graduated. And there was a picture there of John, our quarterback. And I was surprised. I had not heard it that anything had happened to John. So I sent a message to the guy that put it on and I said, what happened to John? John committed suicide. The star quarterback. The one that you would think would succeed and, and do well. And My understanding is he wasn't married. He didn't have any children. And he took his life. Sometimes the ones who are so popular in school, they get used to being popular. And when that is not what happens outside of school, 
Life is really disappointing. I don't know what happened to John. But I know it greatly saddened me. That that is the place that he found himself. It's not all about being popular right now in school. Because chances are, the kids that are real popular in school right now, they might be the one that sell you your car when you get older. Or your house. And it's probably going to be the kids that were smarter in school or average in school who make a difference in their communities. I was the uh, president of the Head Start PTA when I was a young mom. Uh, and that was a great experience. People were looking at me, wanting my advice. People want my advice and my thoughts today. In high school, not so much. Maybe you're the student who dreams of bringing the guns into school. Let me ask you, what's that going to get you? Because either... They're going to take you out in a body bag that day. Or you're going to end up being incarcerated for the rest of your life. And if the reason you brought guns into school was because school was difficult and people were mean to you, what do you think it's going to be like in prison? Because... High school is going to be over in a few years. But if you get incarcerated, that, that's a mighty long time. It could be your whole life. You could end up getting the death penalty. And what does that do to your family? you know the hurt that's going to cause? Because again, when somebody commits suicide and their families are trying to wonder how they missed it, what they could have done, it's the same thing for your family and your friends. Especially if one of your friends knows you were thinking it and didn't say nothing to nobody. And then they're listening as you're shooting classmates. You not only ruin your life, you not only ruin your family's life, you ruin the life of every other person in, associated to the ones you kill. Listen, Guns are not the issue here. Guns can help or guns can hurt. When we use a rifle to hunt, it provides nourishment for a family. When we use a gun to kill another person, you create more devastation. You did not cause anything to be helped you didn't you didn't you didn't solve anything let's solve something let's start talking let's start talking at school let's start talking at home let's start talking about how we feel and about what's going on inside of us do you know that the things that you think are the things that drive you and determine how you feel. Now, I know that's a hard reality, and, and, and I remember the first time a, a counselor said that to me, what you think determines how you feel. And I was like, do you think 
that I want to feel this way? Do you think I want to hurt like this? No. But the truth of the matter is, when we sit and dwell on nobody likes us, I can't do anything right. Nothing's going to get any better. When we tell ourselves over and over again how stupid we are, how pathetic we are, nobody's going to miss us. Nobody's going to care. Or I'm going to get even with all of them. I'm taking my gun into school and I am going to blow them away. And they're going to be sorry. No. They're going to be dead. And you are going to be sorry. Sitting in jail. Every day for the next however many years. Contemplating what you did. And wondering if that was really the right thing to do. All those kids that have already done that, that have already committed massacres in their schools, I wonder today if you talk to them, if they would say, I'd do it all again. Or if they would say, I didn't really think it through. I didn't really consider the consequences of my actions. And what I dealt with in school doesn't even compare to what I'm dealing with in here. I hope that if you are at a point of suicide, you will talk to somebody. If you are considering being the next mass murderer at your school, that you will talk to somebody, a teacher that you like, a parent, a pastor, a doctor, who is it that you trust that you can talk to? I guarantee you are not the only one who feels like you feel. Instead of doing something negative, be part of the solution. Start a group at school to come together and talk, to bind together. To be supportive one for another. There are other kids in your school who are floundering. There are other kids in your community, in neighboring schools, who hurt, who needs somebody else to say, We got. Somebody else who needs a friend who will go hang out at the pizza parlor, you know, pizza joint, or grab a hamburger, or catch a movie, or just to talk. And listen, don't, don't just talk negative things. Make it a point of complimenting people. Make it a point. When you walk down the hallway at school, to smile at somebody. You don't need to know them. Just smile. Hey man, how's it going today? Maybe it's a young uh, underclassman. If you see somebody being bullied, go over there and say, "Hey, come on, let's let's go do you know let's." Come with me. 
Just come with me. Gather around them. You know, there is power in numbers. So what would happen if all of the kids who got bullied, if they saw somebody else being bullied, gathered together around them and just was a, a show of strength and solidarity. You don't have to be the high school quarterback to be somebody at school. You don't have to be the lead, lead cheerleader. You don't have to be the smartest or the brightest. You just have to be you. Because see, the things in you, where you excel, that's going to be the thing that carries you through life. Find a way to express yourself in a positive manner. I'm telling you today, there is hope for you. Don't give in. Don't quit. There's a better day coming. High school's going to be over soon. Graduation's going to be here and gone. And then you're going to be an adult. And life starts all over. Whether you go to college, where you'll make new friends, whether you go into the workforce, where you're going to meet new people, whether you move to a new town, whatever it is you do, please don't give up. Please don't give in. Keep walking. Keep going. You got this. And if we all work together, we can stop all the school shootings. We can make our world a better place where we all have our, our place in society. That's all I want to say today. I just want you to know you're not alone in your feelings. I've been there. I've done that. And if there's anything I can leave you with, it's this. I am so thankful today that I did not commit suicide when I hurt so bad that I couldn't hope for tomorrow. Because if I had committed suicide, I sure would have missed the good part of my life. Because today, life is good. And I am happy. And I have joy. And one day, you're going to be able to look at somebody and go, I'm so glad I didn't do that. Hug your mom and dad today. Hug your friends. Tell them you love them and appreciate them. God bless you all. I hope I helped somebody.